<laughs> Hello. <laughs> Good evening or morning or afternoon. A very warm welcome to you wherever you are uh, to the Dundee uh, Open Mic, Dundee University Comedy Club, whatever you call it. It is a fun wee night and we're on episode six now. With me are uh, an amazing group. <laughs> I've lost count of how many there are, but you know, Ty's a good one. Uh, of many fun comedians, and plenty of new faces as well, and they're going to share their funny perspectives on lockdown. Uh, but first, a bit of tripe from myself. So, let's talk about lockdown. Right here in Scotland, uh, it's quite tough, you know, but some sports are still going ahead, and I, I love to play sports. Luckily, the sport I enjoy is a socially distanced one. I like to play golf, um, but just yesterday I was playing a bit of golf. And uh, I, I had a really bad game. In fact, I only hit two good balls, and that's when I stood on a rake. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so some folk yeah. have, um, you know, they're struggling to find a job. I'm no different. Uh, I recently got a job as a um, as a tree surgeon. Uh, no, sorry, no. I, I mean, I was hoping to, but uh, I lost out. My friend ended up getting the job. I couldn't handle it because I just faint at the sight of sap. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I was talking to my doctor uh, the other day, filling out some forms, you know, filling out some forms. There's always this classic question they always ask you. They say, do you drink? And if so, how much? I said, yeah, pint of tenants, three town 50. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay. So, uh, yes, I was just checking the stream there. Everyone's there. It's a big party. Nice. <laughs> so, <laughs> episode six, I'm quite scared, right? I've never thought, as, as I said, it's six more episodes than I thought I'd make for this. This has always been my dream. Uh, when I was a little boy, I said to my parents, when I grow up, I want to be a comedian. And they said, oh, come on, son. You can't do both. <laughs> 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 um, you can't see it right now because I'm just like my head and shoulders are here but I've got this strange medical condition that um, makes my penis look like a saxophone my penis is shaped like a saxophone and that you know it's, it's because it goes through our family through our entire family for example uh, my cousin has a, a vagina that is shaped like a mouth organ yeah that's our harmonica <laughs> Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so talking about music um as you know i'm from scotland in dundee so guess what i play the bagpipes and that gave me an idea to start a little business so recently i've been making sets of bagpipes out of colostomy bags uh and they they sound like shit oh boy. <laughs> there you go <laughs> oh, <laughs> so a uh, little fact about my youth, I was raised as an only child, and that really upset my brother. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the weirdest thing, right? I was looking out my window this morning, um, which is right behind these these shower curtains. Yeah, I live in a shower, right? <laughs> but so I'm looking out my window in the morning, and uh, I see my neighbor there, and um, he's he's like putting putting soil on my garden and I said hmm the plot thickens <laughs> so from uh from one bad garden joke to a better one I walked up to him I walked up to the neighbor and I said oh whoa what are you growing here and he said I'm growing I'm growing rhubarb I said cool rhubarb oh and what do you have on your rhubarb he says oh, well, I, I normally I normally put horse manure on it I said oh cool well uh, I normally have custard <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, so I'm feeling like this is going okay. I can feel I can feel a few uh, laughs from the from our from our audience. I think it's going okay. And I get give you a wee bit of advice. There are two secrets to success, right? Number one, don't give away everything you know. So I'm going to move on to the next joke. <laughs> um, uh, as I was saying, I've been struggling for work at the moment, struggling to find a job. I was at a job interview the other day, uh, and they always asked this question. They said, uh, Connor, where do you see yourself in five years? I said, I think my biggest weakness is that I'm a bad listener. <laughs> 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 Words of advice, 
very important advice, do not text while driving because you might make spelling mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> so as I was saying, I was talking to my doctor earlier, he was making me fill out some forms. And I'll tell you, the, the problem with me is that it's wind. I have this really bad wind problem, and he, he gives me no respect about it. You know, <laughs> um, I was uh, I was talking to him, and I said, listen, I've got this bad wind problem. What can you give me? Well, he gave me a kite. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so, I mean, I've been uh, traveling about, not right now, but before coronavirus, if you can remember those times. The uh, most recent place I went to was uh, was Africa. Uh, sort of on a like a safari I was quite nervous just because there's, there's you know like tigers rhinos whatever crazy animals there uh and i just said to the safari guys i said listen um i'm quite nervous what should i do if i come across a tiger he says wipe it off and apologize <laughs> <laughs> so um <laughs> You can tell you can tell my sets my sets sort of drag out a bit and I'm not one for timing even though that's what comedy's all about. So I went to the shops uh, trying to buy myself a watch. I said, "Excuse me, yeah, uh, I want to buy a watch." And I said, "Certainly, analog." I said, "No, no, no, just a watch." Uh, <laughs> uh. I give you one fact about me: I could not do volunteer work if you paid me. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> people say, uh, some people say that just because I, I'm dyslexic, I would not be good at poetry. But so far, I've made three jugs, a bowl, a vase. I think I'm doing okay. <laughs> I think I'm doing okay. Teach the haters, right? You know. So um, just uh, just the other week, you know, in the post, um, I ordered myself a first aid kit. I thought, yeah, time to treat myself. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you'll be delighted to hear I'm done for now, and I'm gonna bring on our first act for the evening. So um, uh, I'm hoping that like he can uh, he can hear us laughing because he yeah, is a I very agree. funny guy. He's very funny, very talented. You can absolutely love him. So give it up for the amazing Scott Wayne. Yeah, let's go. Hey, what's up, world man? I, I was under false pretenses when Connor's like, oh, hey, I want you to come uh, do the Dundies. I was thinking the American office, I was going to get awarded a Dundee. <laughs> <laughs> Fatal mistake, dude. Never. Irish, Irish people. You got to keep your eyes on those Irish men, man. That's good. I'm, I'm part Irish, so I, I, I can joke like that. But anyway, so I'm Scotty Wait, guys. Uh, I'm in Phoenix, Arizona. Um, you guys are probably winding down your day out there. In Ireland, I'm just beginning my afternoon on Friday. Feeling good about it. <laughs> Doing this. This is my start. Um, hopefully, it goes well. Uh, I'm a 41 year old whose body's finally grown in his head. I don't know if you guys can see that, but uh, also, uh, <laughs> I get it, guys. I look like the uh, default racist character on GTA. <laughs> <laughs> I also, you know, with my sweater on, guys. Uh, I look like, you know, I don't know how to, you know, separate my, my wash, you know. This used to be a white sweatshirt, guys, and now it's freaking pink. But it's also cool, guys, because I look like I'm in a uh, Limp Biscuit cover band called the Fred Durst. <laughs> <laughs> also, uh, I, I look like I got a podcast on the history of mayo. Guys, if you want to, guys, my, my take on mayo, guys, two eggs is too spicy. So, too much. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, I look like the uh, before picture for Deadpool. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I know I'll let the cat out of the bag, guys. Um, yeah, you're wondering, you guys, Megamind's a real person. It's me. I'm actually the real life Megamind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, also, uh, I look like I get refunds from hookers. <laughs> I'm like, here, take the money. You're like, no, 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 your money's no good. No, here, have it. Nope, your money's no good. Here, have the money. Nope, it's no good. Um, also, uh, 
Speaking of this, guys, I look like the uh, lead singer of every failed 80s rock band. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Behind the Music presents an 80s rock band that you recognize this guy's face from. Anthrax. Where, what's happened to Scott Meese? He's now <laughs> yeah. doing <good> comedy. <laughs> also, um, I, on the flip side, though, this is kind of cool. I do look like the... Uh, the anime hero that everybody, all your friends know you about. Like, oh my gosh, guys, I ran into real life one punch man. His name's Scotty Waite. He's up with smoking <laughs> jokes. And, and watching him land 80 feet away, you know? Also, uh, also I look like the, uh, the white friend that black people have to prove that they're not racist. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you know, Scotty, he's my friend, you know? The guy looks at the default racist character from GTA, that guy, he's my buddy. No way we can be uh, <laughs> I can be racist, you know? Also, uh, I guess I look like I uh, have strong opinions on everything on Disney+. Plus. <laughs> <laughs> so some recommendations. I got you, man. The Muppets are good. Simpsons, can't go wrong. Uh, there's some Nat Geo things you guys can uh, check out there, too. Also, uh, guess, <laughs> I, let's see. Also, guys, I look like the uh, a big fan of Chris Hansen's from uh, Dateline. I don't know if you guys have like thoughts there, but also, uh, I look like I've been caught too many times on, on that Dateline show too. So here's a fun fact: I, I never did. I actually did used to be uh, the gay decoy on the show. You know, let me uh, let me get back into character real quick. <laughs> so they would, now you guys probably recognize it. I, you know, they'd walk in. Come on in, guys. I got the nonsense real quick. Yeah. Huh. And then boom, you know, they, Chris Hansen pops up. They get nervous. I'm like, come in the garage, guys. I'll hold your wiener. And, uh, guys, that's how I busted Jeffrey Epstein and uh, Prince Andrew. So, <laughs> you know, uh -huh. I was, they're like, wait, that's not a 13 year old female. It's a 41 year old grown man. <laughs> like, you know, also, guys, uh, you guys can't tell right now, but I, I definitely uh, look like uh, the real life Jack Skeleton. <laughs> Welcome to Christmas <laughs> Halloween. Also, uh, I I look like I get banned guys on social media for violating their uh, community standards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. It's, oh, uh, and then also, uh, guys. Fun fact, guys, is. I'm too short to be a midget, guys, but I'm just too slightly tall enough to be a dwarf. So they said, just, I missed it by a few inches. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, hey, Connor, how am I doing on time, man? I don't want to, I'm not running over, am I? Oh, no, not at all. You just uh, uh, keep going, keep going right. until you're done. There's no, oh, no okay. limits here. Keep going. <laughs> okay, let's see. I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I man. I, I look, guys, I look like my hair rejected me early on in my life. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa! Oh, what's well, there? I think I've taken over the screen. Um, Scott, you changed, mate. You changed. <laughs> yes. Uh, my apologies for that. Um, I will bring you back. Oh, oh, did he just disappear? Ah, oh, well, see, you know that's the nature of the show, my friends. It, it's like anything can happen, and we've just got a guest arriving. I wonder who this could be. Um, oh, it's him. He's back. Right. Back yeah. and better than ever. So, uh, like for a second, he's got he's got he's got he's got he wait. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that was the shittest back. commercial break I've ever seen. Uh, <laughs> I, guess, I guess that was... <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're back. Yeah. He looks, he looks like he's going to cry. He looks like he's going to cry. <laughs> that was crazy. Right, I guess... Uh... <laughs> We're after his eyes, man. They're going all black. Shark. <laughs> oh, man. Like, yeah, it's like going... It's like he's been possessed by the devil. Like, I am here for you. Uh, Do you think he's a different uh, Scotty? Do you think uh, good, bad Scotty's replaced good uh, Scotty? I think so. There's been a change. Uh, yeah. was, that was a quick drug moment. So. Uh, it, was, 
instantaneous. Where are his pupils gone? He's gone. He's oh, well, left them. Uh, uh, um, I cannot I see guess, whites guess, of his eyes. I guess the hair joke was too strong. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Um, oh, it's nice. Rob Halford. Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> We're kind of waiting for more jokes here. This is staring contest. <laughs> I think it's going all right. First one to blink. <laughs> He's got a text from his best friend right now. So, Yo, what's up? <laughs> Yo, nothing, man. Just did a show. No, you're still in the show, son. <laughs> <laughs> so, oddly enough, this is better than the sets themselves. Is actually, we should have this. It's better than my set. I'll tell you that. Someone disconnects. Scotty, this is be funny. He's, he's still funny, even with the you know not talking. <laughs> no, no, it takes a great comedian to to be funny with silence, like Charlie Chaplin. Uh -huh. <laughs> This is the new face of comedy, people. <laughs> <laughs> it's a solo performance. No, Whoa, it's I'm so back sensitive. again. Okie dokie. Um, uh, give it up for Scott Wade, everyone. He didn't even say goodbye. <laughs> so that was absolutely fantastic. Um, I, I absolutely loved that set, especially like you know the the miming. It, it was it was so immersive. Um, so what have I been up to? Well, you know, we've got to support our, our local businesses, right? So, um, I went to, I went to my boot check the other day and, um, I just said to him, Hey, excuse me. Um, have you got bull testicles? And he says, I wish, yeah, I wish <laughs> you and me both. Right. <laughs> um, and, uh, I've, as I said, I've been doing a few of these shows, getting that effect. I feel like, um, I'm getting uh, deja vu, but I don't want to go through that again. <laughs> so, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, we are going to bring on our next act. <laughs> um, and this, uh, this is his first time on the show. I'm delighted uh, to have him on because he's very funny indeed. So, ladies and gentlemen, give it up for the amazing Emmanuel Paul Griffin! <laughs> Woo. Woo, I'm clapping myself. That, that sounds weird. Yeah. So hi, hi. I I have to tell you this honestly, but I've been tasered. I've been I've been pepper sprayed, and I've been judo flipped. You know, and I do have to say it was my fault. I shouldn't really be going on blind dates. <laughs> uh -huh. And the thing is, I need to change my approach. I need to approach people from the front and not from the back. <laughs> yeah. You know, because that's how I got judo flipped. You know, I got judo flipped because, like, I tried to I tried to tap a girl in the back and say, "Hi, I'm your date," and she stepped forward. As she stepped forward, my hand slipped and went towards her back, and then she noticed that and grabbed my hand and flipped me. And as she flipped me, my head, my back of the head hit the pavement, and I was knocked out. And so I woke up in the hospital and lo and behold, the girl, the girl stayed and she like, she was there and it was, and I thought, oh, this is magical, you know? And I said, how did you know it was me? She said, well, I phoned your phone and your phone started ringing. <laughs> and I was like, oh. So is, so is this the first date? Nah, she said, it's just a sympathy thing, man. And the thing is, my boys come to check me in the hospital later on. And they're all like, no, nah, who did this, man? Who knocked you out? Because I'm six foot four. And they're all like, no, nah, man, who done this? I was like, bro, these, these group of guys, man, they jumped me all at once, yeah? And I just couldn't do nothing about it. And, it, and so we spent the whole night riding around looking for a group of guys that didn't exist. But we got high as fuck. No, that's the thing. It just turned out to be, a, you know, a white girl that knew kung fu, and and that and that's like the sum of my dating life because I've been married. Yeah, someone actually did love me and wanted to spend the rest of their life with me, but you know it didn't turn out too well because the thing is I spent I got out an eight year loan to pay for this wedding. Yeah, thinking oh me and her and her combined wages will will quickly get rid of that debt. Yeah. And so, 
And so the thing is, we only lasted a year. You know, we default, we separated after a year. So basically, the only interesting thing about my wedding was the interest I was paying on my loan. <laughs> And the thing is, we stayed together. We we didn't we stayed married, but we didn't divorce for like eight years, you know, because of tax purposes and the fact that we were paying divorce chicken. It's like, oh, you pay, no, you pay, no, you pay. I don't care. I'll stay divorced, you know. I'll stay married. I don't give a damn. And the thing is, we actually got divorced, and she paid for it all since it was fair. Since I paid for the wedding, you know, <laughs> and. I was coming home one day from work yeah, and I was reading the newspaper and in the middle of the metro, yeah, there was a, there was a full page spread of her complaining about the air quality in London. I was like to myself, bitch, she didn't let me breathe in our marriage. And she's here complaining about the air quality in London. I was I was furious. How how twisted is fate to throw something back in your face like that? You know, just as I finished paying off that debt, it just froze it in my face. Like she got in the paper before me. Mm. You know, I don't want to. I don't want to go to. I don't want to be in the paper for criminality. You get me? I don't want to go to jail because the thing is, I have a I have a nasal blockage problem yeah and the thing is i'm a deep sleeper so me going into jail that's a bad thing because i sleep with my mouth open you know and that's a weird way to get protein in your diet and the thing is you can't even play pokemon go because you can't even go anywhere you're just trapped in in jail i know you can catch these pidgeys and ratatats that are like really strong and shit so, jail ain't, jail ain't for me. And the thing is, I'm from East London, as you can probably tell. I'm from a place called Leighton. And the thing is, Leighton's terrible. Even the NHS is terrible, yeah? Because when I was born, yeah, the day the doctor said to my mum, yeah, ah, oh, don't get too close to this child. He's not going to last the day, you know? 39 years later, my mum still takes the doctor's advice. You know, I'm like, I'm like, mum, why won't you love me? She's like, no, the doctor said, if me love you, you feel dead. You know, I'm like, mum, I'm in the clear. And she said to, and she said to me, what's not fixed, why break it? I'm like, so she thinks not loving me is sustaining my life source. <laughs> That's crazy, you know? And the thing is, growing up in Leighton, you're going to need a big family. Because I've got seven brothers, yeah? And their names are Andrew, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and Isaac. Yeah, that's right. You guessed it. I'm Muslim. But <laughs> I did leave a name out. I did leave a name out. One of my brother's names is Dylan. You know, you're never going to hear Jesus say, come forth, bring me my cup, Dylan. <laughs> it just doesn't kind of fit. You know? And also, as you can tell, I have a wonderful flat. You know, I don't I don't share a flat with anyone, you know, because I'm I'm an adult. You know, <laughs> you know I have a foot on the property ladder. Yeah, and and also is I I don't have no roommate, so I can have naked Wednesdays, you know, and I love it. So it's like you can just walk around. I can just walk around my house just being absolutely naked. And you think to yourself, you're probably thinking, why is he naked on a Wednesday? Because it breaks up the week, you know. When I go to bed and I wake up naked, I'm like, oh, it's Thursday today because yesterday was Wednesday, naked Wednesday, yeah, you know. It would, Naked Wednesday, Naked Wednesday would be cool if I had a girl to, ha, you know, have it with. But you know, I'm single. You know, I know what you're thinking. Oh, no way! I'm like, way. I'm, <laughs> you know, I'm way single to the point. I have two cats. Two cats. Yeah, you're probably thinking, nah. He's probably 
you know, gave them some sort of ghetto names like like Two Paws or the Notorious C.A.T. You know? <laughs> the names are Tibbles and Pandia. You get me? Normal cat names. You get me? But if I did name them Two Paws and the Notorious C.A.T., Every time, every time they have a fight, I'm like, oh, East Coast, West Coast beef, world star. You know? <laughs> every time they got into a little beef. But I love my cats. But I hate them sometimes. I do hate them. Because I hate it when they discover new things. And it's like, they discovered how to get into my bedroom. You know, They know how to pull the handle down. And that's scary when you're high at night. And you're tripping, <laughs> and the door just opens. <laughs> you're like, what? And it's a cat. You're like, you get in my room. No, give me privacy. Huh. You know, I have boundaries. And the thing, and the worst thing is, they, <laughs> they they open the door and then they lock themselves in my room because they don't know how to get themselves out again. <laughs> and the thing is, and the thing is, I came home from work one time and they were both in there. And they both decided to take large, hot, steamy dumps to my brand new shoes. Oh, man. I nearly, <laughs> I nearly cried. How can, you, how can you take them back to the shop and say, look, there's cat shit on these shoes. I can't get them out. <laughs> They're Yeezys. Yeezys, it's not like... <laughs> It's not like they're mostly <laughs> like they're a little leather. It's all it's all like cloth. It's all like material. So it seeped in by the time I got home. So it's like like two blades of cat shit on each shoe. I had, I had shit shoes right next to it. Why? Why the Yeezys? Anyway, does anyone want to buy a pair of Yeezys? You get it. But you know they they have that earthy smell. <laughs> but, you know, huh. I'll put them in the washer a couple of times before you get them. Yeah, you know, size twelve. Anyone? Size no, no. Okay, come. Right. Because you know, through this whole lockdown, yeah, I've been working like a flipping dog because I work for the NHS. Yes, I know. And save your applause. Save it. Fucking save it. Huh. You know, it's because the first two weeks of it was amazing. I would come home late just to see everyone outside the house clapping me and applauding me. I was like, yeah, you guys are heroes too. Stay your ass home. But after four weeks, it turned into... <laughs> because after four weeks, we get paid and we still get the same pay. And we're getting, we're getting screwed. And the thing is, we have to listen to people talk shit the whole time. And you're probably, you're probably on, where do I work? Could I be a doctor? Could I be a porter? You'll never know. But that's, that's just me. I'm, I'm not going to shoot myself in the foot just in case a woman's watching this and thinking, hmm, I like a guy that works for the NHS and career prospects. But, you know, I'm going to I'm tell the truth. I'm an administrative assistant, you know, and it gets crazy because, like, I'm going to tell you a story. I work in a sexual health clinic and I was in the gym, yeah, and I saw this bald guy, tattoos all over his face, yeah. He was working out, yeah, and he was just looking at me, just intent, like, he was looking at me like that, yeah. And I was like, this guy is either racist or it's 2020, I had to catch myself, racist or gay. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. So I was thinking, you know, because the look of desire looks the same when you're working out. See? He could want me or just want to rip me apart. So I'm, <laughs> so I'm in Leighton yeah. now. I'm thinking... What should I do? Should I man up and say, oh, we're looking at? So I'm thinking to myself, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, what should I do? I'm thinking, if I say, oh, we're looking at, two things can happen. One of those two scenarios, at least the next day I'll be walking funny. But 
out of those two scenarios, at least I have a bottle of Prosecco in my stomach. You know? So it turns out, yeah, later on, I'm in the steam room. This, the same guy walks in, sits down, he says, I know you, mate. And I'm like, I don't know you. You work in the, you work in the sexual world kit, don't you, mate? And I'm like, yeah. So, it turns out he wasn't gay, he wasn't racist, it was just some guy with an STI. <laughs> and, that, you know, and, and that's the way things work out in this world. How long have I got left? Uh, yeah, you, you're, you're about done, but you've got enough time to, to you know, say like one more joke. All right, one more joke. Okay. They were, they were, they were looking to like ban a lot of things due to Black Lives Matter, you know, and it was crazy. They were banning a whole bunch of stuff, but they should have. They left two things out, yeah. They should have banned Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, you know, because he sent those tickets all over the world, and not one Jamaican turned up. You know, imagine if a Jamaican did turn up. We're like, wah, guan, willy, wah, cut. Hmm? What type of name is that? <laughs> and the thing is, come to think about it, on a side note, Charlie and the <laughs> Chocolate Factory, on the thing is, on a side note, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory does sound like a great cold word for hiding cocaine up your ass. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. Thank you. And good All night. right. Yeah. Oh, give it a round of applause. Yeah. All right. Everybody give it up one more time for Emmanuel Paul Griffin. <laughs> Outstanding set, my friend. Outstanding. And <laughs> I know what you mean. You know, it's, a, it's important to take care of yourself in these times. I was, um, I was visiting my doctor the other week and um, you know, I just said, like, what's wrong with me? He said, Connor, you have... Pneumo, bacterial, monimo, microfomiosis, but it's hard to say. <laughs> um, so this was serious, right? So I had to go under the knife. Um, and, you know, while I'm there, quite nervous. So I says to the doctor, I said, listen, you know, I'm quite nervous. This is my first operation. He said, don't be nervous, Connor. It's my first operation too. <laughs> Folks, we are going to bring on <laughs> Our next act of the evening now. Who who is this? Uh, oh yes, this person is very talented indeed, and uh, this is her first time on the show. A lot of first timers, and I love it. Variety is the spice of comedy and life. So please give a very warm welcome to uh, the amazing. Uh, oh wait, I gotta get her on the stream first. Uh, okay, okay. Oh wait, which means I gotta I gotta like kill off one of his. Oh, bye. All right, and now. Yeah. <laughs> Please give it up for the amazing Jocelyn Chia. Everybody, thank you so much. I'm calling in from New York City, so great mood here. Biden won, and so a bit about me. I was born in America, but I grew up in Singapore. And at 21, Singapore government made me choose between American and Singapore citizenship, and it was a tough choice. But I end up choosing American. And I was so proud to be an American. Whenever I travel to another country, I would tell people, yeah, I'm an American. But then for the past four fucking years with Trump as our president, when I travel to another country, I would tell people, ah, oh, watashi wa, nihonji ne. Great, in Singapore, my mom used to spank me. Uh, but while spanking me, she'd say this, this hurts me more than it hurts you. Anyone else who have parents who lie? <laughs> I totally believed her. So when I had my boyfriend and one day he pissed me off so much, I got back at him by making him spank me. <laughs> but he liked this. So I was like, oh, mommy was wrong. <laughs> so then I turned around and I spanked him. But he liked that too. <laughs> so I thought, okay, I have to bring out the big guns. And I got my mom to spank him. <laughs> and he <liked> it. <laughs> and he much. I now have a stepdad. <laughs> <laughs> 
So when I came from America to Singapore, once I was flying from Singapore back to the back to the States for college, and in the plane, there was this really hot Asian guy sitting next to me, Singaporean, went to Harvard, studying finance. I was like, oh, that is my mother's wet dream. <laughs> and he was flirting with me. He was touching my leg. He's like, oh, I love what you're wearing. What's it called? I was like, oh, it's pants. <laughs> And I thought we had so much in common. You know, we're both from Singapore, both studying in America, and we had common dreams. He wanted to become a banker. I want to become a banker's ex-wife. I took my to Frankfurt, and I missed my connecting flight, left my hand carry on the first flight, but I thought, oh, no worries. The hot Asian guy will track me down and then return it to me, and then we're going to fall in love and get married and have babies, right? Wrong. A week later, I get my cell phone bill in the mail and because in my carry-on was my cell phone, my MP3 player, up to my disc man, the walkman, yeah. and my camera and my private journal. And so a week later I get my cell phone bill and there are all these numbers from Cambridge, Massachusetts, which is where Harvard is. I realized, oh my God, this asshole used my phone and stole all my stuff. Uh, so I called one of the numbers, just, I didn't even know what I was doing. I just was so angry. I just picked out the phone and called one of the numbers. And turns out one of his roommates had picked up the phone. Um, but I didn't know. I was like, hi, I'm looking for this guy. He's from Singapore. And and the roommate was like, oh, yeah, that's my roommate. Um, but he's not at Harvard right now. He's doing his internship in Chicago. And but he has um, all these numbers I can give you. There's a new cell phone. I'll give you his number, his work number, his landline at home. I was like, Damn. It was so interesting. I think his roommate thought he was going to get this guy late, but he was actually getting this guy in jail, um, <laughs> which will probably get him late anyway. So, you know. <laughs> So then I go to the cops and I'm, I'm crying to the officer. I was so upset. I was like, officer, my future husband is a thief. And the cop was trying to comfort me saying, oh, that, don't worry. It just means he's going to be great in finance. <laughs> <laughs> and a week later, I get a call from, from the officer saying that um, he had the guy here at the NYPD and he had returned all the stuff. And now it's up to me whether I wanted to prosecute this guy. And the cop said, you know, just so you know, because he used your phone, this goes from a misdemeanor to a felony, meaning jail time for sure expelled from Harvard. The INS is going to deport him back to Singapore. So do you want to, to press charges? His fate is in your hands. I was like, wow, that is a lot of power to give to someone so easily. What is it, the Supreme Court confirmation? <laughs> <laughs> but I thought, you know what? How do I'm gonna prosecute him? Because if he gets deported back to Singapore, his mom is gonna spank him, and that's just gonna hurt her more than it hurts him. So <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm just gonna let this guy go. So I did, and a few days later, he called me. He apologized. I'm so sorry. I stole your stuff. Thank you for forgiving me. And he goes, and I'm also sorry because I read your journal, um, but. I, after reading it, I feel like I've really gone to get, to get to know you and your life. So if you're willing to forgive me, I would love to meet your sister. <laughs> <laughs> My sister is very beautiful. Um, you know, they say men, women tend to go for men who remind us of our dads. I know I do because. My men are always, you know, you know, like my dad, my men are usually skinny. They have lazy eyes and like my dad, they're always telling me how beautiful my sister is. <laughs> Man. <laughs> I was like, going to do that joke before the story, but sounds like it worked anyway. So, yay. <laughs> um, so, this guy that I've been seeing, uh, he's a black guy. And, you know, in Asia, we have this saying, once you go black, you can't go back home. <laughs> 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 And in Singapore, um, we don't have a lot of black people. So my girlfriends, they're all very curious about what it's like dating a black guy. So I say, well, I'm Asian. He's black, so he can't fit in with my family. <laughs> my dad's actually very cool with me dating a black guy. It's my mom who gets so envious. 
Uh, he was very emotionally unavailable. He kept pulling back while we were dating. Um, and, and so my girlfriend was like, you know what? If he pulls back, girl, you pull back too. So I tried that. I tried to pull back whenever he texted me. You know, it took a while before I text him back. When he called me, I'll just let it ring. Sometimes I won't pick up. Uh, one day he asked me out. I told him, I fuck your brother. <laughs> mm -hmm. I read that. The number one factor in determining whether a woman gets an orgasm from sex with a guy is, no surprise, ladies, the size of his wallet. <laughs> so the ex and I, we actually broke up. Um, he had a lazy eye, but it could still wander. <laughs> we're actually sleeping together again. Um, but we're still not Facebook friends because he's not emotionally available for that. <laughs> uh, but I know it's not a good idea to sleep with your ex. You know, terrible idea. But I can't help it. He's black, so he has a really big wallet. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what really pissed me off about him was after we broke up, two weeks later, he had a new girlfriend, Facebook official, declaring publicly that he loved her. I was like, so fucking pissed and so of course i looked her up and she's some wannabe actress and i saw her like she had filmed this thing and she put it on youtube and so i was checking it out and it was like such a gruesome scene it was like this other girl had taken you know my ex's new girlfriend had taken her head her hair and was like slamming it against the wall just slamming this girl's head against the wall slamming and slamming and blood was gushing out her face and then she starts collapsing onto the floor and it was so satisfying to see. <laughs> I watched it like 10 times and I came every time. <laughs> uh, my, I do tend to get, so I'm starting to date again. I do tend to get a lot of guys who just want sex. They don't want a relationship. And so my friend was telling me, well, this is what you do to get a guy who is a bit more serious. Don't dress sexily on the first date. Dress casual. I was like, okay, let me try that. So I started dressing down on first dates and it really worked. I stopped getting men. <laughs> but I met this guy who was telling me that he had gone out of a mental institution. I was like, oh, someone can be committed. <laughs> <laughs> I have this girlfriend who is um, one of those new age types, which I can find very annoying. She's always talking about signs from the universe. Oh, the universe is giving me a sign and giving me a sign. One day she's like, you know, I think the universe is like giving me signs to stay away from my exes. I was like, bitch, those are not signs. They are your restraining orders. <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of guys think getting an Asian girl would be great because we're supposedly very submissive. Uh, not true, man. My sister, she married uh, this white guy. And yeah, in the beginning, before they got married, she was like docile Debbie. Now she's dominatrix Debbie. And not even in the bedroom, okay? This poor mm -hmm. guy, he started out kind of an alpha male. Now he's experiencing things he's never experienced before. He's cooking, he's cleaning, he's getting cramps. Mm -hmm. uh, so when I first came to the States, actually I visited London too. Same thing, in, in, in London, y'all can't tell Asians apart. I learned this back in London when I, when I went to the pubs with um, my Asian posse, we could all get in with just one ID. <laughs> and my dad's ID. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you so much. I'm Jocelyn Chia. Thank you so much. For you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Hey. <laughs> Fantastic. Give it up one more time for Jocelyn Chia. Yeah, Jocelyn. That was brilliant. I love that. Fantastic. Um, and you might notice just by looking at me, I've been I've been doing a lot of uh, exercising recently. I'm in training. I'm training for a cage fight. Yeah, the budgie won't know what hit him. <laughs> <laughs> now don't laugh, right? I'm tough. You know, I'm tough. I know aikido. I know judo, and I know plenty of other Japanese words. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So we are gonna bring on our next side. Let me just check 
who it is. And yes, they are here. They are ready to uh, make funny jokes. Uh, Okie dokie. Oh, no, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing. Sorry. <laughs> um, I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. I'm a pro. I'm a pro. It's six episodes and I get sloppier every time. That's so everybody, give it up for the amazing. Now, this guy is the second ever online show. He's incredibly talented. You're going to love him. Give it up for Marley Word. Hey, hello, everyone. How's everyone doing? Um, uh, I guess it's good to be here, I said. I'm lucky I can hear the responses of some of the comedians now. It's always nice to know. Uh, but in case I, I don't get any laughs, I've decided to, after every joke, I'm going to play the laughter from Popeye. Um, if I'm not satisfied with the, with the response I get. So <laughs> let's hope it goes well. So I suffer from a condition. Uh, I get very nervous when I do sound. So I suffer from a condition called pre-traumatic stress disorder. Uh, nothing bad's happened to me yet. I can really feel it coming. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Play a little bit of Popeye there. Uh, it's good to be. It's good to be here, I suppose. Um, yeah, I, it's, I, 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 you know what? I, I do it for my own self-esteem purposes because in performing on live, you spend a lot of time staring into what is like a, like the equivalent of a mirror. It's, it reminds me of doing cocaine again. Um, <laughs> it's it's great. It's honestly, it's it's good. I it's like um, what I realised is, I mean, Emmanuel was earlier bragging about because he's an adult. He, he's a homeowner, and I'm very very impressed with that. Um, unfortunately, I'm not. I, I realised that you know when I moved out of my my uh, parents' house, uh, things actually cost money, and um, fucking hell, that's a bit shit, isn't it? Um, like you know how expensive heating is. Like heating's really fucking expensive. Like so, like instead of paying for heating, I came up with a solution. Uh, instead of paying for heating, I decided to take MDMA. Because um, <laughs> uh, if you take that, then you get to feel warm inside. <laughs> A little bit of Popeye now. <laughs> All right, yeah. cool. Yeah, Popeye. Now back to the joke. Okay, cool. So I recently, like, <laughs> um, like th this is the thing. Like, um, it, it's 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 still good when you want to present yourself uh, in this way. Um, to 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 perform in front of people. You're so used to seeing. Crowds, you're not used to having like no. This is like a lot different from my other gigs because, you know, like um, this is good to have a response because most of my gigs I normally get no response. Um, <laughs> so it was a lot of fun. Um, like I, I, I spent a lot of time, for example, you know, like there's a lot of lot in the news recently about, like for example, um, uh, Marcus Rashid, for example, who um recently did uh, a lot of great work to make sure that kids were kids were fed. You know, I really related to that because I, I was one of those kids that had free school dinners. Uh, my mum paid for them. <laughs> yeah, I always kind of like everyone. Every kid had free school dinners, technically, but you know, it doesn't matter. It's just one more way. You know, Man United player, but who cares? Um, oh, this is a shout out to a friend of mine that's watching. Yes, guys, even even online gigs, I have a fucking bringer. <laughs> that's a commitment there. That's a commitment. Uh, my friend, uh, my friend's watching. His name's Scott. Um, so a uh, little thing you need to know about my friend. He's a bit of a racist. Um, uh, you know, I mean, uh, you know, it's difficult to find morally morally pure friends in in this day and age. Um, so my friend is such a racist guy, but he's kind of a stupid one. This is the problem. Like the only time, like for example, the only time he now, the only time he ever yells out the n word is to make his girlfriend come. <laughs> Especially now she's dumped him for a black guy. <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad Emmanuel laughed at that. <laughs> um, okay, what else do I have to write? Uh, so, like, um, it, it was... It's, it's, it's so much... You know what, man? I'm reading all this stuff and you just realised... Oh, yeah, here we go. So, recently, I, I stopped doing uh, drugs at work. Uh, not, cause I was met, became, not because I became unemployed or anything. Um because I stopped doing drugs at work because I found it very uh, stupid and unprofessional. Really, it was a good, it was a bad idea, especially when you're working with kids. Um, huh. I feel like yeah. I see everyone else with their ambivalent faces, right? You might as well just keep it on that screen. I'd rather just see everyone else's react, like obviously just looking at their own sets and not giving a shit. <laughs> it'd, be more, it'd be more fun than having the illusion that they're actually oh. listening to me and laughing. It's like yeah. probably, what I advise we do instead is, is do the play thing. We all just record our own laughter and just play it back each time another one's on stage so we don't have to watch each other. <laughs> you know, I mean, I know we'd rather do that, let's be honest. I'm impressed that people are still staying. Um, God, it'd be, it'd be really tragic, isn't it, if you have walkouts on an online gig. Um, you know, I mean, does anyone, do we, do we get to donate afterwards? Is there a donation? Is there a bucket collection? I guess not. No, but that's a good idea. That's a good idea. You know, I won't say no to money. 
yeah, 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 neither would I. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think many people would say no to money. Um, uh-huh. Depends where you are. So uh, I, this is the thing. Like I, I find it, I find it quite difficult. So it's like um, being stuck in your room all the time. I mean, it makes you kind of uh, like very, very crazy and kind of very um scared about going out. So like, I like you, it's difficult to meet people throughout this time. Meet, but you have to meet people and go on dates and things like that. For example, the last date I had was um like coming up a year ago now fucking hell what a loser i am um i can't even I can, the only thing i can say now i can i can now praise the pandemic being like that's a good thing that's the reason i'm not seeing anyone but i went i want to date this girl and she had a, an iphone and uh of course she had a bit of money that's always good um but she had an iphone but the problem is she like she she got it out uh not to call the police or anything um she got it out and it had like a broken screen so I, I I I didn't go out of her after that because I couldn't trust her. You know, if you have a broken iPhone screen, it says a lot about your character. You know, if you're gonna drop an iPhone, you're gonna drop a baby. <laughs> and like babies are more difficult. And the thing is, like you know, ba- like a baby's not as complex. Like an iPhone's more difficult to make than the baby. I mean, the only people that find iPhones e- as easy to create as babies are Chinese people. Okay, got no response. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. God, God, put Popeye in there. God, do you know what, man? These these sets, like, it does feel kind of like um, I don't know, just so dry, doesn't it? <laughs> just going right. out to absolutely no one. Um, I suppose the last thing I can really do with, with the set really is it's kind of, I suppose I don't know if, you know what? Fuck it. This is how this is what comedy's comedy's like. I mean, I don't know how long have you been going. Um, anyone been going? How long has everyone been going? Quite anyone well. Is anyone going to answer? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, how long have you been in stand-up? Uh, I don't know, 10 years? Ten Although you would never guess because I'm shit. Oh, really? oh damn. I'm looking forward, to, looking forward to watching your set then, yeah. No, mate, don't, don't, don't. <laughs> <laughs> this is more fun than chatting to everyone. Look, I've got my fucking washing in my room. This is the tragedy I'm in. You know what I mean? <laughs> You know what? I'm going to start doubling up. I might fold my washing uh, during the set. Is that okay? I mean, it make up for the lack of material, I think. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, just, it's difficult to come up with material. But, um, it's the thing. Like, I mean, I suppose I can... Oh, you know what? I'll tell this story. Why not? Uh, it'd be interesting to put this online so it's recorded forever. Uh, I'll tell the story about how I once almost had sex with a man. <laughs> so, um, I once... Uh, you know, when I was... Very, when, I was um, when I was younger... Uh, you know, much more hopeful in in, in life. Uh, I went to a uh, I went to a club. I went to a pub. It's got sh- shut down now by uh, COVID, unfortunately. Uh, but I went there and I met this uh, met this guy. And uh, I, what happened was he started chatting to me. He was a really nice bloke, and we started just having a good time. And um, it just so happened that I happened to have, have dropped about five uh, p- pills of ecstasy. And um, in doing so, I realised that you know, you know, like when you chance this guy, he was like coming on to me. And like, I quite enjoyed it. I'll be honest, quite enjoyed it. It's nice to have someone giving you some affection. This is why a lot of us do this sort of shit. Um, yeah. And uh, well, he's kind of coming on to me and being like, you know, like, oh, you're really good looking. You're this and that. And it's like, yeah, it's just like, it's lovely to hear, isn't it? And in doing so, like, I, I thought to myself, you know what, man? Like, maybe, like, I'm meant to be gay. Maybe this is, this is the whole point. Maybe my awkwardness with women in life is the fact that I'm meant to, you know, uh, find men attractive. That's the, how maybe I've always been... But deeply costed inside, perhaps. Uh, so I decide, you know what, fuck it, let's go have sex with this man. And uh, oh. I go back to his place, and uh, then I realize, oh shit, I'm not, I'm not gay. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> well, like, what do I do? Like, I'm embarrassed. Like, what do I do in this situation? Like, like I'm not gay. So what do I do? Um, so like, I don't know, man. Like, I, the problem is in this situation. Yeah, what do I do? Do I just not have sex with him? Uh, nice to hear someone's getting a phone call at the same time. Uh, no, I didn't have sex with him. Um, <laughs> what I did was, I uh, instead, like, I felt really guilty because I don't. The thing is, I don't want this reputation getting out there. I don't. I don't like. I felt really bad for the dude because I don't want to get the reputation as a tease. You know. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, lovely, lovely bit of Popeye there again, and uh, yes, yeah, so I just kind of and ended up with um, you know, him just. Trying to touch me a bit. I don't think I'll ever turn down someone offering to suck my dick more than that man that night. And uh, yeah, but a little story about him is uh, he's uh, now uh, got a girlfriend and a kid. <laughs> 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 so um, 
I don't know, man. I, I, I don't know if it's uh, pray the way of gays necessarily a, a way of doing it, but perhaps uh, maybe I can get involved or something for the homophobes out there. But there we go. <laughs> okay, this, this okay, this disjointed set is uh, coming to the end. I think uh, it's been great. If I've got a message from this gig, uh, I think it's just uh, don't be a victim. I know I look like I know I look like one, but there we go. Uh, <laughs> I, like, like this is my message for people that are victim. I like, I like when my parent like um my dad for example is always a person that sees himself as a victim um uh because you know because he got my parents got divorced. I know shocker, and um. They got divorced, and uh, he used to say to me, he said, oh, she, she took everything that's mine, Mark. she took everything that's mine. She took my cars, uh, she took my dog, she took my house, she took my settee. At no point did he mention me. <laughs> but he, did, he did console me afterwards, so I said, don't worry, Marley, I never thought you were mine. <laughs> yeah, and... <laughs> 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 That's how life goes. Anyway, I've been Marley. Thank you very much. All right. Yeah. Hello, Marley. Oh, do you keep me okay. up? Yeah, give it up for the amazing Marley Worth. Woo! I'm going to give this one thing this show could do with. It's a wee bit more Popeye. So thank you very much, Marley. <laughs> and folks, if you look at that, that link below, uh, used to say, go like. Connor Phillip Comedian on Facebook. Still keep doing that, but right now you can see that link there. You can buy me a coffee, right? So you, you follow that link and then you can sort of like donate money and I might use that to buy a coffee. But you can also just buy yourself a coffee and that'll save some hassle. Or, but by the way, it's 8 p.m. where I am. So it's uh, I, I shouldn't be having a coffee at this hour. I'll be up all night. So, so you know, wait, wait till the morning. Follow that link. Buy me a coffee if you want. That'd be grand, you know. Um, in the meantime, I'm trying to stay in shape, right? Uh, I've been training for a marathon by running five miles every day. And it's hard work, but it will be worth it in the long run. Mm. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, that's, that's me. You know, I always like to go the extra mile. Yeah, um, I, I always like to give it my all. And I think you should always give 100% uh, unless you're donating blood. <laughs> so. Folks, I'm going to bring on our next act for the evening. Uh, and this this guy's very talented indeed. I am delighted to have him on the show. It's another first timer. Oh, variety, variety, variety. So give a very warm welcome. Put your hands together for the amazing Bruce Lipsky. Hey, hey, hey. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Oh, yeah, yes. Um, I'm looking at all you young kids over here. I uh, just want to let you know, this is a true story. I graduated high school back in the early 70s. That's 1970s, by the way. And uh, we were required to take swim class. But in my swim class, we had to swim naked. <laughs> imagine the first day you get into class, and I'm asking for my bathing suit, and uh, teacher says, we're not using bathing suits. So little did I realize that my birthday suit would become my bathing suit. Uh, but thankfully, woodworking wasn't run this way, you know. But, but just imagine having been 14 years old, having to do forced skinny dipping with all your classmates. You know, again, little did I realize that I was doing a casting call for Naked and Afraid. <laughs> uh, and, and during the class, we actually had to play water polo. And the teacher kept on yelling, protect your nets, protect your nets. I'd be back in the corner of the pool saying to hell with it. I'm trying to protect my nuts. <laughs> <laughs> but I did become an excellent one-handed swimmer. And in competitions, I wasn't the best. But I always held my own. And, <laughs> and also, this naked swimming was actually a used confidence builder with the women. Especially when I perfected the breaststroke behind the bleachers with my girlfriend, Mary Lou Zabrinsky. She was a lovely lady. Yeah. I just turned 65 years old, by the way. Amazing. You know, you guys will get there eventually. But, you know, I looked in the mirror the other day and said, shit, I look like an old automobile, an old wreck. You know, yeah. my, my body is out of alignment. And you're going to find this out, guys. My hoses are starting to leak. My ball joints are all dried up. And my rear end is making funny sounds. Uh -huh. Terrible. Uh in my house, if I have a leak, I used to call a plumber. 
Now if I spring a leak, I call my urologist. And he's 50 bucks. <laughs> And I'm looking at you young kids there, it's Friday night, you know, you want to go out with your friends, the music comes on, you get on the dance floor and you go bust the move. I'm afraid to take my wife dancing. I may bust the hip. <laughs> and I'm starting to forget things. I swear my phone matches has a better memory than I do. And I'm starting to become a late night exerciser, really late at night, between the hours of two and five in the morning. I run sprints from the bedroom to the bathroom. And I got my time down under six seconds now. <laughs> and my wife and I just celebrated our anniversary. 30 years of wedded boosters. And that's because all these years she's been rubbing me the wrong way. And I have the calluses to prove it. <laughs> and we actually we just bought one of those adjustable beds. But I learned it's not a good idea to piss her off before bedtime. We had an argument, and she took the remote control and raised both the head and the feet into a shape of a V. I said, I can't get into the bed. She said, that's not the only V you're not getting into tonight. <laughs> and my wife is all business. She puts everything on in the Excel spreadsheet. Excel is spreading and putting out and before I met my wife, I dated many women. I even dated a famous TV weather person. But the first time we got intimate, it was like a bad winter forecast. She was predicting 10 to 12, and all she got was 2 to 4. <laughs> and my wife and I love doing things together. Broadway shows, ice dinners, colonoscopies. And we got perfect colons. And I have the photos to prove it. But every time I show them, I get the same response. What a couple of assholes. Huh. We just went shopping for a new mattress. There's so many choices out there. All I know is I like mine soft. She likes hers hard. Like I haven't heard that before. <laughs> and, and, during this, and during this pandemic, my wife has been obsessed with buying on Amazon. The packages are nonstop. My front porch has just been rezoned as a loading dock. I got boxes stacked to the roof. It's like I'm playing a game of Jenga for Giants. <laughs> and I'm constantly running from the front porch to the living room to, to the second floor. I'm like a personal delivery monkey. Grandma got primates. I think I'm really starting to worry. I think she's having an affair with the UPS guy. He's always going on and on and bragging about how big his package is. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what Brown's doing for her, but what's Brown doing for me? Now she's into fantasy role play. She has me dress up in brown shorts, construction boots, and carry a clipboard. Every time I want to have sex, I got to sign for it. Uh, and this is making my family life miserable. The only smiles in my house now are the ones in the boxes. It's awful. Uh, and it's a non-stop with my wife. She just went out and bought a $4,000 designer door. I said, you must be crazy. She carries this around like a Gucci handbag. That Gucci handbag only costs $3,000. And it doesn't need to be walked six times a day. Uh, mm -hmm. And this dog is completely taken over my bedroom. She dresses him in silk pajamas and a gold collar. He lays on my side of the bed on my pillow, snoring and farting. What's left of me? And I'm starting to wonder who the man in the house is now. I'm afraid to kick him out of bed. I think get scratched, bitten, and growled at by my wife. And I don't know how I got the only dog with restless leg syndrome. I'm constantly getting kicked in jab. I haven't slept in two weeks. My wife says, how do you know it was the dog? And she recently put the dog on the science diet. Me, she put on the science fiction diet. She served me canned spaghetti and meatballs. You know those limp noodles with the glow in the dark sauce? Disgusting. All I know in 30 years of marriage, I never served my wife a limp noodle once. <laughs> and so on top of that, you know, when it comes time to travel, having a dog is very difficult. 
We just got back from vacation. I spent $39 on the Holiday Inn. She spent $250 a night on a five-star pet resort. It had to have Wi-Fi and cable. I said, what does the dog need Wi-Fi for? Is he going to surf the net looking to score my nickel on plentyofpooch.com? <laughs> if I'm not getting it, I'm not paying for his romps. And then I said, what does he need cable TV for? She says, well, you know how upset he gets when he can't watch his favorite show, on Animal Planet. <laughs> and now the latest thing is she makes custom clothes for the dog. She just needed a dog a sweater. Why do I buy off the rack at the department store? And she's making custom clothes. She said, he's a designer dog. And now we only go to pet-friendly restaurants. The other day, I ordered a hamburger for $9.95. She ordered a $29.95 salmon platter. I said, why? She said, it's good for his coat. He doesn't need a coat. You're needing him a sweater. <laughs> and during this pandemic, I actually had the COVID virus. About seven months ago, I got it. And during this time, sex was out of the question. I was quarantined. But in order to keep the passion alive, my wife took one of her black lace bras and made masks out of it. Thankfully, it's just a double D, or else it would never fit over my nose. <laughs> you should have seen what I did for, with, her, with my athletic supporter. But, and I got tested for the virus, and uh, I had antibodies. My doctor said it was the highest antibodies he ever saw. 7.1. The normal is 1.4. I can go up to any woman right now and say 7.1. Not inches, but antibody units. I can pick them up any time. I'm like the Ron Jeremy of antibodies. And during this pandemic, we started getting them food delivered to our house. And the supermarket said, we can't guarantee getting the food you ordered. I can understand the zucchini for an eggplant, you know, rye for whole wheat. But how do you go from Colgate toothpaste to preparation H? <laughs> even, my, even my dog had it suffer. He had to go from the science side to my wife's cooking. Terrible. And before the pandemic, my wife used to do all the shopping, which is a big mistake. Every time I asked for something, she got it wrong. I said I want regular orange juice. She gave me orange juice with Coke. I want creamy peanut butter. I get chunky style. I said I needed Ben Gay. She brought home Ben the Bag Boy. <laughs> <laughs> but when she wanted part of control toothpaste, I gave her my preparation H, which is always chewing my ass out. <laughs> and one final thing, my wife is a big fitness nut. She takes goat yoga. For those of you who don't know what goat yoga is, this is where you're in the studio, you lie in the back, the goat roams around, jumps on your back and licks your ears. He says it's very therapeutic and relaxing. I said to her, how come I tried that last week? You slapped me and threw me out of the bedroom. And now you're paying the book to do it. He says he has great technique and fresh breath. That's my time. Thank you very much. Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. Give it up one more time for the fantastic Bruce Lipsky. <laughs> Absolutely outstanding, my friend. You're welcome back anytime. That was awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, pleasure, pleasure. So things have been getting a bit, a bit scary for me um i think because like i noticed my neighbor has been stalking me uh yeah you know she she googled my name last night yeah uh, i saw it through my telescope and <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, the breakfast i was making for my family this morning that was meant to be a surprise but the fire trucks ruined it <laughs> Now I'm going to bring on our next act, uh, if he, he has a connection. Oh, I hope he does. He might do. Uh, this guy, this guy, uh, he hosts uh, the Reckless Comedy Podcast. He's very funny indeed. Uh, also, he is uh, hosting a show on the 24th of December, uh, a.k.a. Christmas Eve. And uh, guess what? He's asked me to be a co-host. Uh, so I'm very excited for that. He's incredibly talented. You're going to love him. Give it up for the wonderful... Can uh, wait? Where is he? Oh, I think he's. Oh yeah, there he is. Kim Nash, give it up for Kim Nash. Oh yeah, Kim Nash, how's it going? <laughs> oh, we can't hear you. 
<laughs> so my wife and I were going to the grocery store the other day, and <laughs> dog started. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so you, you got uh, his voice spot on. Uh, uh, I, I don't know what's going on. So I, my I, hair's I, been try... bleeding, and uh, it's been going down my back. That's really, that's really, that's really, that's really reckless comment. This is reckless. Foulless comment. Oh, I thought I heard him. No. No, I think he's still looking for shoulder. <laughs> it's his own button in the back of his neck. Maybe he just switch uh, on. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so give it up for Kim Nash. Kim Nash, yeah, everyone. Yeah, yeah. I love that. <laughs> you know what I mean? That was, uh, that was a little bit of Charlie Chaplin for you. A bit of mine, right? That was fantastic. So um, what other stuff can I tell you? Lockdown, it's been kind of boring, you know? And you got to do things to pass the time. But just last night, me and my brother watched three films back to back. Luckily, I was the one facing the television. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I I hate peer pressure, and you should too. <laughs> yeah. So guess what? Um, I think <laughs> uh, we will uh, we will just bring on our next act, and hopefully that tech issue is resolved because Kim's very funny indeed. But for now, we're gonna we're gonna introduce our next act. It's another first timer. How good is this show? Uh, he's a very funny indeed. You're gonna love him. Give it up for the amazing Sean Gibbs. Hey, what's up, everybody? Hey, Give it up for your host, Connor Phillip. Everyone. Oh, nice. Uh, Kim's trying to message everybody on that. Uh, oh yeah, Facebook. For, uh, yeah, Connor Phillip, the Jack Benny of Scotland. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hey, Mar is Marley still in the room? He's doing laundry. I was wondering if he was from Manchester. Uh, Bruce Lipsky, take his wife, please. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, I look like he could stay in the room. Uh -huh. You guys have already forgotten who Scott Wade is. <laughs> He's long gone in Arizona. I've been eating a lot of uh, vegan hot dogs recently, and uh, it's just so unhealthy. Because uh, they're made from the worst parts of the vegetables. <laughs> uh, they're, they're, I, I live in Brooklyn. There was actually a vegan bank robber, but they were caught a couple blocks away because they couldn't shut the fuck up about it. <laughs> I'm not just saying my cat is an asshole. I've also written it down. Oh, the ding means that's a good joke, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, expect plenty more dings. <laughs> dinging, dinging it all the way home. Uh, yeah. I took my sick hamster into the veterinarian, and he just gave me a new one. <laughs> I'm not sure if there's a murder hornet in my backyard, but he is singing, murder was a case that they gave me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at Pete Kelly enjoying his life. Uh, <laughs> I have six parakeets that all love each other. Um, it's very polyamorous. <laughs> you know, atheists celebrate the holidays by being annoying. <laughs> it's not that I don't believe in God. I'm just very selective about when I do. Um, I like mini golf better than regular golf because it's a little less racist. <laughs> I'm waiting for myself to laugh at myself because that's the only person I can see right now. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, some comics get mad when they come into a room and people don't laugh. Uh, not me. I just wonder why you guys haven't left already. Oh. <laughs> All right. I, uh, I got arrested for killing some snails. Uh, it was assault in the first degree. Mm. <laughs> I will resort to kid jokes and puns. I don't give a shit. <laughs> I will take whatever I can get. Uh, my pleasures should be presumed innocent until proven guilty. Mm. <laughs> mm. 
The thinking <laughs> man, the thinking man's comic. Uh, <laughs> I uh, used to drive a hearse until I realized it was a dead end job. <laughs> Keep it going for dead people. If the dead could speak, they would probably say, "Stay alive." <laughs> <laughs> hmm. People are so critical of white people these days. When I die, they will accuse me of gentrifying the cemetery. <laughs> <laughs> I look like a guy who lives in Scotland, but wishes he lived in Brooklyn. <laughs> 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 yeah. You've all seen this guy. You know, you know who I'm talking about. Uh, death seems like it's going to last an eternity. I want my eulogy to say, don't worry, you'll see him soon enough. <laughs> I went to a funeral home to discuss my arrangement for my death, and uh, they said, do you want to be buried or cremated? I said, I want to be reincarnated. <laughs> <laughs> staying alive, staying alive. Uh, I've been... Uh, feeling like i've been getting a little old lately uh i haven't had an election in four years mm -hmm. <laughs> what a big election it was <laughs> there are more people killed by guns than cars this year uh not to be outdone the nra is now mounting guns on cars <laughs> In my mind, it seems to me like bicyclists who have uh, lights on their helmets have been hit by cars before. <laughs> huh. How many actors does it take to change a light bulb? They all want the part. <laughs> I'm going to leave you with this. I cook bacon topless because why would I want to get grease on my shirt? All right, give it back to your host, Connor, everybody. Thank you for having me. All right, yeah. <laughs> oh, there he goes. There he goes. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. I just, oh, yes. And Kim Nash is here. Guess what? We're going to show he's here. Yeah, Kim, can you Kim. say anything? Kim, are you... Yes, I think I'm working now. <laughs> Sorry, we can't hear you. Oh, you're, you're on. You're on. You're on. <laughs> you're on. Fantastic. Well, guess what, folks? Um, uh, oh, this is quite cool. You know what? I heard what Marley was saying earlier. Maybe we should just try this format now because I, I feel a bit less lonely. Yeah. This is all right. I'm just going to tell you something. So this is it. You know, you've witnessed a change. You've been here for history has been made, and I'm honored that you could be a part of it. This is one of my happier moments, one of my sadder moments in childhood. I had this, 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 this disease where I had to eat dirt three times a day to stay alive, right? And uh, it's a good thing my older brother told me about it. Anyway, <laughs> without further ado, yes, let's bring it on for the amazing, reckless comedy host. He's doing a show on Christmas Eve. He does it all. He does it all. He knows it all. He's amazing. Give it up for the amazing Kim Nash. Thank you. Round two. Round fucking two. Yeah. As I was trying to say at the start of my last set, um, when I gave Connor that co-host position, I might have been off my fucking head. I do <laughs> not know. I, I, I make some questionable decisions. I don't know if. If you do, um, Connor definitely does having me on the show again. Um, but yeah, <laughs> let me tell you a bit about myself. Uh, my name's Kim. Uh, my name is actually Unisex, which I. What are you doing, Connor? Oh well, that this is our new format. We're gonna do it this oh, way. See what happens. Okay, throw me off track. No worries. Um, yeah, so my name is uh, Unisex, which I think is a lie for two reasons. Um, number one, I could never afford uni. Just fucking look at me. Look at me. I live in a flat on my own. I don't even pay rent. Um, and the second reason why I don't think, um, why I think my unisex name is a lie is um, I don't get sex. You do this on any other comedy show, I'm like, I don't get sex. And they're like, ha, virgin. And I'm like, ha, true. <laughs> true. Um, this COVID thing has been an absolute bollock ache. Talking about bollock aches, um, anyone heard of Freddie Mercury? He's a pain in the balls, ain't he? He's an absolute pain in the balls. I'm trying new stuff. Um, a lot of comics have told me that I should start categorising my material. You know, I split it into three new sections. 
Uh, and these are the three sections. Number one is old stuff, so stuff I've done before. Second one is new stuff, and obviously newer stuff that I'm trying now, which clearly ain't fucking working. Um, and the last one is my personal favourite. I save it for the hecklers. It's the fuck you section. <laughs> now, obviously, we did heckle Scotty earlier. Don't fucking try it. <laughs> I can see why you're doing it. Um, but, you know, the saying, Netflix and chill. I, someone said to me recently, oh, do you do much, net, do you like Netflix and chill? And I'm like, what the fuck do you think I've been doing in lockdown? What the fuck? Uh, my, uh-huh. Netflix and chill can go fuck itself. Another word that can go fuck itself is unprecedented. <laughs> That word, the next person to say unprecedented is getting a kick in the jaw. If I can bring that Yeah. Yeah. I don't promote violence, but I do on the show sometimes. Um, trying to think. (laughs) This ain't going well. Um, I recently just got out of a relationship. Uh, anyone here single? I'm not asking you out. Okay. Anyway. Now, my last relationship, it was one of those relationships, you know, you know when someone says something and the other person doesn't like it and then it all ends up in a high Supreme Court trial. This is what happened, which got me out of my last relationship. I said during sex, okay, and this is a word of advice to all of you, do not do this, okay? When you're having sex, do not say to your girlfriend, her ass looks like a pan of chocolate. (laughs) Don't say that. It would have been all right if I had stopped there. Instead, I decided to go, your ass is like a pan of chocolate because it's crusty and it has a filling. Oh, God. (laughs) (laughs) Anyone ever wonders why I limp? That's the fucking reason. People recently told me that this whole COVID thing is really terrifying. And I said, if you want to see terror, try spending one minute with my mother. Thanks, Freddie. Thanks, Freddie. <laughs> you have a support there. No, what am I doing? But yeah, you, you haven't seen terror until you met my mother, ladies and gentlemen. Literally, you walk, you look at my mother and you shit yourself. Maybe that's why she's gone through two men in the last nineteen years. Um, just like Connor, I was a only child. Um, when my mum said that she was going to have another child, I said to her. Fuck me, who would want to fuck you again? Didn't work the first time, did it? This is the reason why I'm like what I am. Um, one thing I will say about this COVID thing is I recently discovered a brand new disorder. You've all heard of PTSD, as Marley mentioned earlier. I recently came down with a, with a new disorder, very similar to PTSD, but it's called PTLD which stands for post-traumatic lockdown disorder. And because of PTLD, I am currently very infected. So you lot are all fucked. (laughs) (laughs) Um, This is the thing, you know, stand-up comedy, it's hard. People people say you've got to have thick skin to be a comedian. And it's like, (laughs) it doesn't help I lost all that weight. It doesn't help. (laughs) <laughs> it really doesn't help. <sighs> like this, this is this is going just as bad as I thought it was. Um, <laughs> you know, like you know, Netflix and chill. Can, I, as I said, Netflix and chill can go fuck itself. I'm just going around in circles right now. Um, I'm gonna finish on this one word of advice. Actually, actually, as we've got Americans on here, I'm gonna say this: Donald Trump isn't taking the loss very well, is he? He's like that child you don't want. You know, you put him up for adoption and he's like, no, no, I'm not going. And it's like, hey, Joe, it's Joe's turn now. <laughs> Donald Trump. That, it's going to be funny watching Donald Trump get dragged out the White House. Is anyone else interested in seeing that? Can you just, they're going to have the fucking hog time. That's taking BDSM to another level, ain't it? Hey, what do you want to do? I want to do the Donald Trump. Oh, for fuck's sake. (laughs) That's why I don't go out with racist women anymore. 
<laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna finish this here because um I, I don't want to hold you guys longer because I know there's acts much better than this. Um, I will do a quick plug though. Uh, make sure you do join us for the Reckless Comedy Christmas show. I'm definitely not. Yeah, Connor, you're happy about that. You're you're not getting the paycheck, and I promise you, while okay. I make. I promise you, while I'm making this plug, there is definitely, definitely not someone pointing a gun at my head. Seek help. Anyway, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I've been Kim Nash from Reckless Comedy. Make sure you join us on the Christmas show. Um, thank you very much, Connor, and I'll see you all soon. Peace out. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're worth <laughs> Yes, Kim. I know all these people putting them in. Shout out. Give it up for Kim Nash, everyone. Oh, Kim. Absolutely fantastic as always, bud. Fantastic. So uh we are gonna <laughs> <he's gone. laughs> we're gonna bring on our next act. Uh, and I think we'll just do it right now. So uh, he's right here. You can see him. Now let's hear him. He's very funny indeed. Bring it on, Martin Bay! I would like to be on full screen, please. I'm a narcissist. Uh, of course, man. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm great to be here uh, in the support group for lonely men. Um, I was first beaten as a child. No, um, just joking. Um, <laughs> that, thank you for having me on this gig. It feels weird. I normally do it standing up. Uh, it does feel like a different kind of energy sitting down, like I'm in therapy, you know? Um, <laughs> but I'll tell you a few things about myself. Uh, I like older women. Uh, I think that some of the older women have that younger women don't. Uh, biscuits. I <laughs> uh, spent a lot of time on Tinder. Uh, I met my last girlfriend the old-fashioned way, uh, when they were in an auction. <laughs> That's my favourite joke. Fuck you guys. Um, I've been playing a lot of judo, right? They say in judo you have to use your opponent's weight against them, uh, which is why before a fight I often shout, fat fuck. <laughs> uh, what else? Um, I was going to order a book on nihilism, but uh, what's the point? Um I did. Uh, I did get a book on codependency uh, for a friend. Um, but, ladies and gentlemen, as this is the weirdest gig ever, I'm going to try out some jokes here that I've got written down. Cause fuck it, right? Um, yeah. Do you want to hear some? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm starting a course on toxic masculinity. Uh, so come along if you think you're man enough. Um, that's all right. Uh, my cat is in heat. Uh, she briefly uh, appeared behind Al Pacino in the famous cafe scene. No, <laughs> I knew that was bad as I was saying it, so don't worry yeah. about that. Right, what else do we have? Um, do you want puns or dark jokes or funny jokes? Funny. Funny. Yeah, Good. funny. <laughs> um, what else? What else? Um, but it's your call. Thank you. I might just see um, <laughs> what we have here. Uh, I don't do rude gags. Uh, I've got an OCD gag that's super clean. Come on, fuck you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can't decide whether I get a really uh, outdated haircut. Uh, I think I'm going to mull it over. <laughs> and he's back. <laughs> yeah. I, I was driving along and there was a side of the road that said hidden dip. Uh, I later found some salsa in a bush. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Come on. Uh, I should tell you a bit about myself. My name is Martin. Uh, growing up, my mum always used to say to me, Oh, you're going to grow up to me just like your dad. And I did end up leaving her. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. That was a joke, don't worry. I end up moving back. <laughs> <laughs> like Dad. Um, now, I do live in a small house with Mother, and you know, she doesn't mind when I bring girls back for sex, uh, as long as we stick to my side of the bed. Um, <laughs> actually going to try an impression, right? I thought about this. It's a bit of like, it's something a bit different. It's an impression of someone on a stream gig that doesn't realise they've been watched. <laughs> we 
<laughs> fucking shit. See, that was good, that was my impression. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I just find it weird these these online gigs. It's I was having therapy earlier, and it kept saying connection weak. I felt like it was having to go to the therapeutic process. <laughs> Kept expecting to see erotic transference buffering, you know, it's fucking weird. But yeah, no, these online gigs are weird. I don't know because I normally stand for them, so this does feel like a different sort of energy. And I feel like in the shirt, I'm the best friend of the rom com. Do you know what I mean? Um, <laughs> like, you love her, man, go after her, or like, you know, the abrasive flatmate, you know, sits in between them when they're watching a film. But I always think, like, first dates are weird when you go and see a film. You spend two hours sitting in the dark, not talking. It's like you skip straight to marriage. <laughs> um, what else? I was recently on a, a website for diabetes, and it said, do you accept cookies? Uh, which I thought was some sort of test. Um, <laughs> uh, I was never I was never a bad... Oh, no, I've just read that wrong. Right. Uh, let's go for another take. Uh, I was never a beta male. Uh, my parents were BHS. Huh? That is fucking shit, right? Um, <laughs> well, this one, right? Speaking of puns, right? I I sometimes like to dance all the letters of my name. It's my signature move. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so lonely. Um, <laughs> well, so we try. I'm gonna end on something. Uh, I'm gonna end on something. Uh, good. No, I'm gonna end on something. Uh, uh, my gran recently got a very expensive stair lift. I was like, someone's moving up in the world. But seriously, folks, you've learned a lot tonight. Um, I don't think I'm going to do these gigs again sitting down because I, I, I feel tired, you know. It's better standing up to have that energy. Uh, but there is one thing before I go. Uh, I've been enjoying my films recently. Uh, I did watch a porno version of The Sixth Sense. Yeah, I knew she was dead the whole time. <laughs> hey, I've been Martin. Thanks for listening. Cheers, guys. <laughs> yeah. Hey, give it out one more time for Martin Bird. <laughs> and folks, <laughs> well, you know, times keep on changing, right? And you notice online gigs are weird, and I, I find them a bit weird myself, too. I know what you mean, man. Um, everything is becoming more online because of the circumstances. And uh, I remember one of my friends told me that eventually technology will replace all paper. I thought, well, He's never wiped his arse with an iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> so, folks, we're bringing on our headliner, our magnificent headliner. <laughs> and this is going to be a Dundee Comedy Club history. We've never had, like, a PowerPoint presentation, but we're going to have it now. <laughs> so get ready. Okay, Pete, we're going to get you set up, my man. And this really? is going to be marvellous. Uh, uh, well, maybe. I, I don't know if marvellous could be the wrong word. So let me... Um... Can you see? Can you see it? Uh, well, not not yet. But I, I think I I think I know what I need to do. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's cool. And then can you can you see me? No. Yeah, I can see. I can see. Can you. I, before I start, can I just say, right? I I never do these online gigs at all, right? But I did because I'm originally from Dundee and I felt the shoes. But also because you guys have been all amazing, and can I say congratulations to all the Americans? Because now you've got a new prime uh, president, and you'd be laughing at us over here. Yeah. So congratulations, <laughs> and and also I want to say is. Not part of my set. I love when I'm watching these uh, these these TV Zoom interviews on TV in the news, and everyone's got the fancy bootcases. And Martin, you've not let us down on that no. at all. <laughs> well, well done. <laughs> 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 I thought books I've never read. So, <laughs> <laughs> Martin, you're good. You're good. Okay, man. Yes. Yeah, so I've got your PowerPoint on the screen, so that should be you ready to go. Right. Okay. Can you see me or just the PowerPoint? I just the PowerPoint. That's okay. Then I can just I can just take my clothes off. Brilliant. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, I'm gonna apologise in advance and I'm gonna say thank you for sticking around. My name is Pete K Malley, and that is me. Right. Just want to start off with saying I was in the tube in January before lockdown, and I, I'm sure you can see this. Just just before, can you see it quite clear? Is it okay on your on your computers? Aye, that's perfect. Yeah. No problem. Amazing. Well, let's. I saw this advert on the tube, it was opposite me, and there was some 23 and me. And I looked over there and I said, what did your DNA say about you? <laughs> then it said, Father's Day offer, save £20. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? It was, um, 
it's all very strange using PowerPoint. Pretty much, I am using the PowerPoint because I'm a geek and I've been, I was, I was meant to go on this big tour and I was going to use the PowerPoint. And of course, now I figured out how to use it and the tour was cancelled. So I just want to point out, I am, I'm not famous. I am not famous, but you might recognise this. This is an, uh, an article from the Dundee Courier. I know, Dundee Courier, right? I've not been yeah. Dundee for years, but the Dundee Courier have picked this up. And they picked it up and they asked me, they phoned me up and goes, can you do an interview? And you can see they're getting to know you. It's like, yes. And they said, listen, we're going to ask you like uh, 30, 40 questions. And what we're going to do is we're going to print the funniest ones. I'm like, yeah, that sounds amazing. Thanks, right? So question 32 was, what is your favorite food? I'm like, oh, yeah, I like a kebab. But they won't put that in because it's not very funny. I am so unfamous, the kebab got more footage than me. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I laughed. Uh, it's it's hard, and I'm a bit pretentious. I know I'm a little bit pretentious. I've got my logo. It's weird. You thinking why on earth have you got a logo for? And the reason is I do a lot of music festivals. I do like Rambler Man and Call of the Wild, and I'm a comp rock compare. And I've got DJ, so I need my logo. So I needed to get my logo. I didn't know what I wanted for my logo. I'm like, well, what'd you get for a logo? And I thought, well, I've got this logo now. People say it looks like the Palestine flag. I'm saying that's really good. It's really important to me to represent the Palestine flag. I don't really know what the Palestine flag looks like. I've never read The Guardian in my life, but I got it. I quite like it, but I didn't know what I wanted as a logo. So I decided to look at other logos to decide what I wanted. I didn't want. I didn't take Montreal Saturday's logo. I thought, hmm. <laughs> Cheeky. And I didn't take the Allington Pediatric Centre's logo. <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't take that. And I also didn't copy the Clinica Dental San Marcelino <laughs> logo. However, it does look a good place to go. What does it look a good place to go is there. <laughs> Not touching there. So I didn't really know what I wanted. So I went to a local guy and he said, listen, what you do is you go down the high street and you look at logos and you question what they are. So I said, I don't know what you mean, mate. And he's like, look, what's that? Like, that's McDonald's. And he goes, right, what is it? It's Golden Arches. And he said, you're wise at Golden Arches. I'm like, oh, because he, you're walking into a new world. And he's like, yes, what's that? Because that's a Nike store. And he goes, what does it show? And it's like a swoosh. Why? It represents fastness and quickness he's like yes you've got it what's that and i went that's cost of coffee and he went what did they ask for and i went they asked for their name in big letters and he goes great and what else did they ask for and i said oh, we know we're established 1971 what else did they ask for and i went i don't know three bald vaginas oh, <laughs> so my, my logo was taken because a local guy did give me these logos because of my tattoos. I don't, I've got tattoos all over my arm, and that's what they kind of represent. And we've all got tattoos now, and I'm at that stage now, I'm in the 40s, we've all got tattoos. Now look at other people and go, I wonder if they've got tattoos. And most people don't know this, but Boris, Boris has got a tattoo. Boris has got a tattoo on his arm that he may now regret having. <laughs> it's not only him who's got that tattoo. And... He's, the other politicians have got tattoos. You don't think politicians have got tattoos. Matt Hancock, Matt Hancock has got a tattoo. He's got this on his back. I don't know if you know this again, but I did my research. He's got it. Knit fast, die warm. <laughs> it's not only the Conservatives with tattoos, isn't it? It's Labour or old Labour or sacked Labour. Yes, sacked Labour have them. Jeremy Corbyn's got one. Fuck the system. And... <laughs> Dominic Rab, our favourite Dominic Rab, has got my most famous, or my, my most special tattoo ever. Yes. Patrick Swayze as a centaur. And if you're thinking, hold on, is that Patrick Swayze? The actor's head is way too small for his body. The late great Patrick Swayze on a centaur's body and garish rainbows. That must be the worst tattoo I have ever seen. Give it a couple of minutes. No one puts baby in the corner. Mm -hmm. They fucking will. Uh, however, just for you Americans out there, you know, you get a bad press worldwide. Us British people say, God, aren't Americans stupid? Well, I want to put this right. I want to congratulate Dominic Healy. This is Dominic Healy, ladies and gentlemen. Dominic Healy broke into an H. Samuels in Wolverhampton, and then he got back into his car and he drove home. Two hours later, the police were there. How? Because the NCP car park had a camera, and Dominic Healy had his name and his date of birth tattooed on his neck. 
Yes, welcome to the UK. However, that's not the worst. No, it isn't. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to introduce you to Zach Briggs. This is Zach Briggs's tattoo. Uh -huh. Wow. You might be thinking, this is a piece of art, and it is. Look at it. His tattoos must have been unbelievably proud. The face is on his back, the hair, the girl's hair is on his shoulder, and her breasts are on his buttocks. His tattooist must have been unbelievably proud. And you know what? So must have him. He must have been so pleased with that. He must have been so proud. He must have been so happy until six weeks. Yes, six weeks later, he was sent to prison. Dear, oh dear. I mean, his asshole must be wider than Prince Andrew's alibi book. So, <laughs> I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch off my PowerPoint and uh, it's a quick, quick old, uh, it's a late night, it's a quick old point. I hope that's been okay. It's been very different for me because it's the first online one I've done. Can I just say, for me, Pick Your Marley, which you can't see me, I've now put on my clothes. Thank you very much, Connor. And thank you, Connor, you've been amazing. Thank you very, very much indeed. All right. Hey, give it up for PK Marley. Thank you. And you can put me on the other on the other page. I don't know if you can put it on the other page or not. I don't know. You don't have to. Uh, I'm not sure. But you don't have to, sure. of course. Yeah, but um, uh, maybe, maybe I can. Uh, oh, if somebody sure. comes into this room now, all they can see is me looking at a pair of a woman with a pair of a man's buttocks with a pair of nipples. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I move it back exactly. to my logo and look at pretentious. Uh, I got to say, I love your logo. I love your logo. Do you like it? <laughs> I do. It's, it's, uh, it, it, it's, 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 it's so bad. I don't know if you've seen this. I've actually got it on, on this beer coaster here. <laughs> but then I've also got, no t I've also got like, what is she will tell you what? You guys in the USA, you know how to make TV. All right. Well, I've not done my Christmas shopping yet, so I might need to get one of them coasters, man. There's, I think you it's do, on everyone's that. waist like, hey. <laughs> it looks like so. Lewis Hamilton, but it is me. I I too right, man. So uh, now that that is uh, the end of the night. I've a very warm thanks to everyone who's been watching along, and I'll just end with a wee story. So I was in hospital uh, a few days ago, and right, and you know, I was I was like on the bed, and they're sort of wheeling me around, and, and I was looking about, and um, I see I see in one of the wards, I see this guy, and he's just sitting on his bed, and he's masturbating. And I said, that's, that's disgusting. What, why am I seeing that? And he said, Connor, this guy has got a medical condition. Uh, and, and it means that his, 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 his balls, they fill up with semen so quickly, he has to masturbate like 10 times a day. And I said, OK, fair enough. So we keep going. Then I go to the next room and uh, there's another patient and he's, he's having sex with a nurse. And I said, oh, come on, what's going on there? He said, well, that's the same health condition, but that guy's got private health care. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. We have come to the end. So uh, please just join me in uh, applauding all the wonderful acts we've had so far. Uh, so uh, Scott Waite, uh, Emmanuel Paul Griffith. Yeah, we'll just keep clapping and clapping. Uh, Jocelyn Chia. Yeah. Uh, Miley Worth. Hey, uh, Bruce, Bruce Lipsky. <laughs> yes. Uh, we also had Kim Nash. Sean Gibbs, he's with us right now. Yeah, big up for him. Brooklyn Sean Gibbs, yes. Martin Byrne. And we finished off with the fantastic PowerPoint presentation and time from Pete K. Malley. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, that has been our longest show by about 20 minutes, and I'm delighted. It could not have been a better show. Huge thanks to everyone watching. Huge thanks to everyone involved. From myself, Pete, Sean, and Bruce, good night. Good night. Thank <laughs> you so much. You're great. All right. Everybody's You're both done, Connor. Thanks, Connor.